Lily or Lucy or something like that. Yeah. Far from it being all vague or saying things that apply to just everybody, you'll get very specific details. She's saying something about a hat that you used to like or something with a hat, yeah? One thing I saw was uh, there's a dog. He's saying uh, something to do with his dog that used to sleep in the hallway. And the answer sort of came back, sort of, no. Yeah, well, it's something in the hall. It could be a picture of a dog. Um, picture, is there a picture of a dog in the hallway? And the answer came back, no, I mean, I've just put up another picture. I've put up a picture in the hallway of, um, of the family or something. That's it. He's saying he doesn't like the picture in the hallway. You want to, he much, uh, and it, the, dog was, the dog was forgotten. Dog. Yeah. But it actually started <laughs> off talking about a dog. <laughs> There's a network of over 500 spiritualist churches across Britain. Here, Tuesday night is seance night. And we ask that we can now build a bridge between this world and the next, so that we can once again go some way to proving that we survive death and that our loved ones in the spirit are forever with us. Amen. Okay, I expect most of you are familiar with spiritualism, but those that... Spiritualism makes a nod to God, then it descends into a darker world. The real draw here is when the dead start talking inside the medium's head. Okay, well, the first link that I want to do is I feel I've got somebody giving me the name Charles, and I want a gentleman on the spirit side that passed with chest conditions with this, and there's something about a name that sounds like, it sounds a bit like Devon, but I thought I could hear, it um, could be Dev, Davon or Davenport, something like that. And I feel over, over this side somewhere. Can anybody understand this so far? The lady close to the bookshelf there. Would you understand somebody on the spirit side with the name Charles? No, but I have a home in Davenport. You have a home in Davenport? Yeah. OK. Isn't what you're doing cold reading? Well, depends what you call cold reading. This is something that a lot of the rationalists have come up with, is saying that what you do is you say something and people basically make it fit. Well, I'll see if I can find the Charles in a minute, but let me just give you a few things that I can feel about you. Has there been a few problems with a stomach condition around you? Because I feel as if I want to go to my stomach and I feel uncomfortable there. Does that make no sense to you whatsoever? No. Well, would you understand, then, a lady that I want to connect with on Spirit's side that would suffer with the stomach condition, yes. because I'm being given the stomach condition, yes. OK? And I feel with this lady, I want someone that's a fairly comfortable build, I would say, a bigger build lady, not a slight build lady that's given me this, yes? Yes. Yeah? I think when you really examine the evidence of what myself and other mediums do, you will find that a large, large proportion could never be explained away by something like cold reading. It's because there are sometimes such specific details that come through. And I'm seeing like a painting, or a print it would be, of a painting that looks like a Stubbs painting. You know, the ones of the horses and the pigs and things like that? The lady in the white at the back there, I'm not around you, am I? Oh, I hate it when I can't find the link. <laughs> Let me see if I think if I were talking to someone in the spirit world, I'd say things like, what's it like being dead? Can you see the whole of the universe? Uh, why do you ask them such banal questions? Yeah, good point. But I think what happens is that mediumship comes from the non-rational, non-verbal parts of the brain, if there's such a thing. I believe it's a blending of thoughts between myself and the spirit communicator. But if only it could be just like a telephone line. Let me just see if I can get a little bit more information from her first. If you've convinced a person that that's their grandmother to the point that they're actually crying, I mean, surely those tears enough are, are perhaps proof that they've had, they've had proof that that really is their grandmother that's making well, the communication. It could, could, could indicate just a desperate wishful thinking, perhaps. Now, don't feel I'm with a Stephen Bennett, but I've got those things I want to bring together somehow with particularly a car crash. Ben died in a car crash and his best friend was called Steve. Your friend Ben passed, so, but it's not Bennett, as I said, but it was Ben. Let me see if I can describe um, Ben to see if we can... Beyond whether it's true or false, what concerns me as well is the exploitation of often vulnerable people. Um, can I say, when you were buying the new shoes, had he been on your mind at that time? 
He's on my mind all the time, really. Yeah, but, because it's yeah. as if I was particularly felt him around me at that mm. particular time. That's why I feel I'm, I've got the connection yeah. with that. And, you know, his message is really, in a way, sorry. Because he can't... Do you feel it might actually be damaging to some people, stopping them from letting go after they've lost somebody that they love very much? Um, it's a good point that a lot of people bring up that, but I believe that it does help people to progress and move forward. He gives me the feeling that... Um, but do people move forward, or do they get addicted to a spiritual hit? Most of this congregation are regulars. Craig Hamilton Parker's grasp here seems impressive until it transpires that he's already read this bereaved girl before. He, um, he actually had a tyre on the left hand side of his car changed before the accident and the police thought there was something to do with that. And I had a message from you before saying it was something to do with the tyre. I've given you a message about him before. Okie dokie, I can't remember that. But anyway, I want to sort of feel his... I believe what I do is absolutely true. I believe that I give. You really believe it? I believe absolutely, seriously, 100 you believe it? That it's true because it's been proven to me against what I believe is against my rationality. But it's been shown to me so many, many times that life continues. And personal proof that I've had has given me proof of my father past of continuation of spirit. I mean, incredible things that I are so very personal and subjective, they're hard to argue a case for. But for me, it's been life transforming. And I believe, as I was helped, I can help others. <laughs> Time and again, so-called psychics claim special status outside science and evidence. I have personal proof it's true to me. But as with religion, if it hangs on private feelings that can't be proved or disproved by science, then in what way can it be valid or meaningful to the rest of us? Next, I want to find out what happens when those who claim mysterious powers do allow themselves to be tested. No, I think it's four. So, shall we see how well you've done? I want to show how scientific reason is always the best way to look at the world and explain the dangers of superstition. I'm often asked how I know that there isn't a spirit world or psychic clairvoyance. Well, I don't. It seems improbable, but unlike the fixed worldviews of mystical faith, science is always open to new possibilities. Scientists test and retest evidence refreshing our understanding of reality. Until quite recently, scientists didn't know how bats fly around in total darkness. Could they have paranormal extrasensory perception? In the 1940s, the American zoologist Donald Griffin demonstrated experimentally that bats use sonar, echolocation of their cries. Back then, sonar was brand new military technology and the theory that it was natural to bats outraged some of Griffin's colleagues. But the more scientists tested the evidence, the more robust the theory became. They found out exactly what the bat cries were like, how they work, how the brain works. Everything about it added up to a complete picture of mutually supporting evidence that this really was a fact. It's this cumulative build-up of corroborating evidence that distinguishes the discovery of bat sonar from alleged paranormal effects. The so-called evidence for psychic phenomena is not robust, but will-o'-the-wisp. The more we look at it, the weaker it becomes. The alleged detection of water through dowsing is not obviously ridiculous. It might work, but does it? The only way to tell is through a rigorous experiment. <laughs> 